Hello once again. So in this video we're going to cover a few random things here. Uh, the big part of it's going to be what's called DLL calls. They're really cool, a lot of fun to mess with, and they add a lot of uh, ability to AHK that normally AHK could not maybe perform certain functions. Instead it's going to call upon the functions that are built into your computer, uh, the Windows files and library and whatnot. So that's really cool to do. and the DLL just stands for Dynamic uh, Link Library, and it's really good for containing a bunch of stuff, code, data, resources, uh, especially like images and whatnot. And um, the other thing I wanted to cover was a few other small things that I've had in some of my videos but never really fully explained. One being uh, Set Timer, and that's just, it's almost like using a loop, but instead you have a countdown and it just executes whatever code you have every X amount of milliseconds uh, for you. And then I also want to talk about a random number generator. That can be used in uh, quite a few ways too, which I'll show you. So let's go ahead and jump into that code, shall we? All right, so we got the DLL calls here. So the first one I got here, I'm just going to use the hotkey F1, and I want to get a variable on a message box. Uh, basically, I'm trying to use the DLL call that when I click on one of those uh, yes or no box kind of style things is what I got set up, it's going to grab the ID uh, specific for that uh, button that I pressed, which you'll see here in a second and understand a little bit better. Probably not doing a great job there on explaining that. So a lot of this code you don't really need to mess with. Um, DL stuff, I, I could go really in depth with that. It, it can be pretty complicated, a lot like regex. Not as complicated as that, but you know, it can get up there. So this is going to be the text of what's going to be in my message box. And it just has press yes or no. And then I just have the title, uh, which I just left as title of box, and then kind of just what style you're using. I'm just using four. And you can look that up to see specifically what kind of message box you want to have. And I believe I already have this running. Yep. So I'm going to press F1. There's that title of the box. Press yes or no. And then I have the option of yes or no. So I'm going to push yes, which is then going to save it as this which button variable. And then I'm going to get that message box saying you press button with the ID. So yes, you press button number six. On the other hand, if I push no, you press button number seven. So this is helpful if you want to have like an if saying if, you know, which button equals six, do this. If button equals seven, do nothing because they push no. Um, AHK does have, you know, GUIs that can perform these same kind of actions and message boxes that you can, you know, input data or have uh, yes and no uh, buttons in them. This is just kind of another way. Honestly, I would stick with the AHK version, but there could be a reason why you might need to do that this way. Uh, this one's really cool. This one I think would be very useful in kind of like a gaming environment. And this is just going to change my mouse speed while I hold down a button. I could see this being useful in, you know, like Call of Duty or something. You, you switch to a sniper rifle and you want to slow down your mouse speed maybe to help you aim a little better. Uh, that that would be really cool to do with this. Uh, so basically what we're going to do here is uh, our first DLL call here. That's just um, saving what our current speed is. That way when we're done and we release that F2 key, it's going to revert back to my original settings. Uh, so we got the DLL call here. And you know it's calling the variable from up here. And where is that? Okay, yeah. Original mouse speed. So that's what we're going to be saving uh, as our variable so it can be called again later. Uh, that's just the uh, parameter of it, basically. Um, but now we want to actually change that. So we're going to have it right here. Where is it? Right here. So this you can adjust depending on how big of a difference you want. You know, change it, you know, one, two, three, four. Basically, it's uh, at least with my mouse, there's different. There's like five clicks I can do. 
So this is going to set it to basically the lowest setting on my mouse. I could put three to go to like the mid speed, uh, which I think is what I normally have it at, but I want to go slower. So I'm going to put it below the number three. So I'm just using one. And then we got a key weight, which is why I'm holding down the F2 button. Don't do anything. Keep it at that mouse speed. But then when I release it right here, F2 up, that's where it's going to revert it back to this variable that was stored up here, the original mouse speed. So the only thing you're really going to have to adjust in this entire script uh, right here section is just the uh, numbers down here on uh, how fast, how big of a difference you want your change to be, really. So hopefully we can kind of visually see this one, uh, so we'll see. So I'm just going to kind of wiggle my mouse back and forth here. And I'm going to push F2, and as you see, it's slowed down considerably. That's actually probably a little too slow. I should probably set it at 2. And then I'm going to go ahead and release F2. And boom, I'm right back to my original speed. Slow. Fast. So I could definitely see this being pretty popular with gaming stuff, especially uh, you know, Call of Duty games like that with guns. Let me know what you guys would use this with outside of uh, you know, like a shooter game that you could think of. I'd be curious to see that. Let me know in the comments below. All right, F3. Uh, this is basically uh, just another message box uh, with the system. Once again, we're just saying, you know, hello world here, what the title's gonna be. Uh, the only difference between this one and the one up here is, if I can get this to scroll up, all the information I'm, call, I'm gonna have in that message box is actually in the DLL call line of uh, code, where here I'm just using variables, as you can see here. Hello world, and then title. And all you gotta do there is, you know, just put that there, no, uh, uh, no parentheses, where up here, if you want the actual text, you are gonna put the parentheses. So that's the only difference. It does the exact same thing, so I'll just go ahead and push F3. There we go. Hello world and the title. And then hello world 2. All right. So that's pretty much uh, a real basic intro to DLL calls. Uh, I'll definitely be expanding on this much later, but I figured I'd give you a few small scripts to kind of introduce it to you, maybe uh, see if you want to use it. Uh, don't really see much of a reason to use these message box ones. Uh, it's more of this mouse speed one that I think most people are going to be interested in. So let me know. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely be making some more DLL videos for you guys. All right, let me close out of that script and open the next one. Oh, what did I call that one? Yeah, new video. All right. So this is pretty basic stuff right here, but it's, you know, super helpful. Uh, I use set timers all the time. They're pretty simple to set up. It's just when I press F1, it's going to set timer. What do I want to be called upon, which is down here, as you see. And then how many milliseconds? So 5,000 milliseconds just means five seconds. You don't have to put these as a hotkey. If you want to start your script and automatically have the timer start, you can just delete you know, your hotkey. You don't need one. You can just put it at the timer at the beginning of your script. Now, at any point you want to turn the timer off, I do have F2 assigned to that, where it says set timer, same name as up here, but instead of any type of time, I'm just putting off. And that's just going to stop the timer for me, no matter at what position it, it's at in that countdown. You know, it's not going to finish counting and then stop, it's just going to stop right there on the spot. So what I want with this is basically every five seconds, it's going to call down here, and just display a message box saying hi. This is obviously where your guys are going to put your code of what you want to happen every five seconds. So I'm going to push F1. One, two, three, four, and five, and there we go. My county might be off by a fraction of a second there. Should have done some one Mississippis. And there's the hi. Now, I was talking, another five seconds went by, so right away it had that message box another five seconds and then here I'm gonna actually just push F2 and that stopped it 
So I won't get that message box anymore. All right, so down here for the hotkey F3, this is where we're going to do some random number generating. Once again, very easy. Random. Rand. That's just the variable of what you want it. You can call it whatever you want. And then what's your minimum number and what's your max number? You know, these can be anything from zero to like two million if you want. But I'm just doing between 1,000 and 10,000. And the reason I chose those numbers is down here with my sleep, I want it to be milliseconds. So basically one second to 10 seconds. And it's just going to pick a random number every single time I push F3. It's first going to display a message box. Once I close that, it's going to sleep for however long that number was. And then it's going to have another message box after that timer runs out with that random number. So let's try that one out. So we're going to push F3. So it's going to do uh, 2,700, basically, uh, milliseconds. So about three seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. One, two, and three. And there we go. To 2,700 second milliseconds later. And we'll just do that a few times. Yep, about two seconds again. One, two... Uh, I'll say, uh, let's get a higher number there. So this is going to be about 8 seconds here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely bad at uh, counting there. Uh, this is super helpful. Um, I've talked in some of my previous videos about when you're playing video games, especially like online or something. If you're using auto hotkeys to automate something and somebody kind of sees you doing very, very repetitive task over and over at a very specific interval, someone might get a little suspicious and try to report you saying, okay, this guy is clearly using a bot to do a task over and over every 20 seconds. Using the random generator with some sleeps in there is going to make it look a little bit more natural at least. I don't guarantee that someone's not going to catch on, but it's at least going to make it look more human, if you will, and less bot-like in such a repetitive uh, motion there. Uh, I got a few things commented out here. Uh, the message box, random. Uh, this is the same thing as this line right here. I just kind of wanted to point out that you don't have to put a comma here. If you're just going to be having a variable in that message box, you can literally do message box, percent sign, and then your variable without that comment or without a uh, percent sign at the end there. Just another option. Uh, with a sleep, if you don't want to have this random up here and just have one line of code versus two, you can use sleep, comma, uh, that single percent sign, random, and then just put your numbers here. So between 5,000 and 15,000. So you can do that. If you're only going to use one sleep, this is the way to do it. But if you're going to have a bunch you might as well just use uh, the, the actual random function on its own and then just have each sleep call upon that variable. The last thing I wanted to talk about that I see a lot of questions being asked about this is uh, when you restart your computer, obviously your script closes down. Well, how do you make it so that it's always running as soon as your computer starts? Uh, I actually have a multiple scripts on my computer that just automatically start. So I wanted to show you that. So on your keyboard, if you push Control Shift Escape, you're going to get your task manager here. And you can go to Startup. And for example, right here, here's one of my scripts that's running. If I just want to disable that, I can just push Disable here. Maybe I don't want it running anymore, but maybe later I might change my mind. So this is kind of how you uh, enable or de disable it. But you got to put it into your startup folder before you can even get to this point. So to do that, you're going to click your start menu down in the bottom left corner. And then you're going to type in... Oh, you know what? Actually, sorry. Easier way to do that is on your keyboard is the Windows logo and the R key. And you will get your run thing. You can type run down there, but this is definitely a faster way. And here's what you're going to type in there. Shell with the little clock dots. I really should learn what those are called. 
and startup. I'll uh, copy this into the description below also, just in case this is hard to read on this screen. So now I'm just going to push OK. And that's just going to take me to my startup folder. And there's that stream, uh, stream write uh, HK file I have in there. So all you really got to do is, with one of these, just go ahead and make a shortcut with it. So create shortcut. Nope. And just drag it in there. And the next time I uh, restart or just start my computer in general, this script will automatically run for me. But I do not want that, so I can always delete it, or I can just go to the Control shift escape and just delete it, or disable it from there. Alright guys, if you guys have any questions about anything I went over, definitely hit me up. This was more of just kind of an intro to a few things, especially DLLs. I definitely plan to do a lot of videos in the future on those, because there's a lot of content there. I mean, there's so much stuff you can do. I could make hours and hours worth of videos, but this was just meant to be kind of an intro to them with a few ideas to get you guys thinking. And maybe ask me, you know, hey, can you do this? And it might be something I can throw into my next video when I talk about DLL calls. All right, guys, thank you so much. Please subscribe. It helps me out a lot. And I'll see you guys later.